welcome to the Fredo Lounge and the uh, Mulder office because definitely X Files, even the kind of thing they did uh, last two years, was a lot better than uh, all those kind of uh, goofy remakes. And I will go straight up because it's been nine minutes and I'm ranting about Google and this kind of configuration user experience that's no good. So let's jump right now into this rise of Skywalker, which is probably medium fans. When I say medium fans, I'm talking about, you know, those, those guys and those gals that maybe uh, our age, they kind of grown up, but even though uh, they are not that much, um, talking about movie and specifically this last movie of the Skywalker saga, the last real thing from the soul and mind of George Lucas. Definitely. I think it's going to be this. So they have to please the fans and I uh, think they will have please the mid range fans or the, 20, 30 years old fan. Guy like us in the 40s, uh, we didn't find any nostalgia. For those of us as fan who had uh, been deeper into whatever it is, canon or legend or expanded universe, they might find some kind of cookies, Easter eggs. And as I said, I won't spoil anything, but I'm just giving you like... The impression about uh, about that. So definitely, this movie uh, no emotions for me, no feelings. I laughed a little, but there were a lot of actors again in that movie. Kind of, even if it was J.J. Abrams, I had the same kind of ambiance of feeling that. It was an empty case. It, it, it's an empty shell. Very beautiful effect made by, of course, the great ILM. ILM and Industrial Light and Magic, founded by George Lucas. And uh, the acting, of course, Adam Driver is a good actor. Uh, Daisy Ridley, nothing to say. Uh, Finn, played by Boyega, kind of thing. Oscar Isaac, he lost it, I think. Uh, I think you want to go back to real theater, uh, real play, real, real acting. But he's a good actor. I like him. I like him very much. One of my favorite movie of his is um, the not the Gang of New York. Sorry, it was uh, Violence. Uh, I forget, but it was about the whole crisis in New York in the seventeen. Uh, tremendous like acting, and also he, when he play also again in New York, uh, a singer that. Anyway, he's a good actor. They were a good actor, uh, except for, for those who you don't understand why they're here. It's kind of a extra. Now, that's what we said at the bar. It's like extra player, but on steroids, and there's nothing. Uh, the plot of the movie is completely childless. And this is the funny thing. Uh, I knew since probably 1981, when I was only six, seven-ish, when my cousin bring me to Boucherville, which is on the south shore of Montreal, to see my very first Star Wars ever, which is which was at the time Empire Strike Back. But you know, in the cine park, back in the 80s, you have always uh, two movies. So uh, me and my best friend at that time of six, seven years old, we went there at the cine park and uh, we discovered Star Wars uh, uh, on this giant screen on top on the roof of the car of my cousin. And then, uh, of course, we saw The New Hope, which was episode four by, by that time. And it became, um, it became after that, um, uh, The Emperor Strike Back just right after this. And uh, so, voila, I was Zook. And then moving forward, Return of the Jedi, uh, a bit later, 1983, I think. That was kind of poor. Even that, even at that age of nine, ten-ish years old, I was not really impressed with Return of the Jedi. I was was really marked by 
by um, a lot of pace of the new hope and especially uh, Empire Strike Back. It was a winter movie for me. Uh, it was like a knowledgeable movie and especially for a boy who grew up with a single mother and having knowing that I had a remote sister with my father, like I was like identifying with uh, like my sister could have been Leia and I was maybe Luke Skywalker, especially maybe it doesn't look now, but I was like very, very blonde, blonde, blonde hair. So yeah, that was it. And we play a lot because back then the kids, yes, we had toys, but we used to play a lot of what we've seen on movie. And we did a lot of play in the park and Ashtaga Maisonneuve and the Plateau Montréal. I remember that. So anyway, so this is the kind of nostalgia. I think you, you will all agree, uh, all the people my age, like in the 40s, that kind of grown up with these, uh, we've been affected. But of course, depending on your level of maturity, uh, really quick, uh, in high school, uh, we were absolutely waiting for the prequel, sort of speak. And um, I realized very soon, about 14, 15 years old, that uh, by rewatching the original trilogy, as they call it, episode four, five, six, that it was made for kid. And uh, it's a soap opera. It's not really a sci-fi type of thing. And, uh, it's a family stuff, soap opera family stuff for kids. So uh, let's say when you want it, especially in the teen year of uh, 13, 14 to 16 years old, when you wanted sci-fi, you wanted something with Raptor Hour or Harrison Ford playing for real, like in Blade Runner, for example, or all those movies, like very dark sci-fi movie, uh, cybernetic movie. Even Johnny uh, Mnemonic with Johnny Depp in the early 90s was uh, a lot interesting. And then came Matrix, probably my favorite franchise with all the philosophy, all the spiritual thing that, that I've learned before and while and after. But in Star Wars, it's made up for kids. Okay, but it was kind of interesting and at some point, uh, because we were kids growing up with this, so it's kind of a hook. It's like when you start being hooked into the uh, Google ecosystem or the um, Apple ecosystem, and then you cannot get rid of of the thing. So, but I'm conscious. I'm conscious about this. <clears throat> so it's not like I'm alienated, you know, that I don't know that, and I won't cry or I won't laugh or nothing, <coughs> like most of. The unfortunate zombie, uh, they say they connected, but they are unconnected. So that being said, um, we, we, we kind of keep going to Star Wars. And, um, and at the end of the century, beside Matrix, when Star Wars, the Phantom and us arrive, me, I was really pleased because I felt that George Lucas had the means technologically to made the movie that he wants, plus the notoriety. So, of course, Phantom Menace was a bit long, but when you understand the rhyme of the Skywalker saga, it's kind of interesting. And you go back like 32 years before the, what we've seen in 1977. So, 42 years later, uh, you have Disney, the horrible Disney, and even George Lucas said that he said it to a white slaver. And uh, you have very, very bad visionary type of thing that they are submissive. They might be creative. J.J. Abraham is kind of creative, but it will be in the line of what the producer, such as Kennedy, will tell him to do. And Ryan Johnson, two years ago, was the worst. <clears throat> so really, it was a very enjoyable evening before that kind of this holidays resting vacation. And I won't take much time. Uh, we'll make it about half an hour. So you see, you have nine minutes now to listen to me. Uh, so no spoiler, no critic necessarily, just what we experienced at this opening fan event. So uh, actually we experienced, I experienced nothing. Uh, yeah, my friend was kind of okay, okay, it was more like okay, 
And uh, no, no, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Uh, will I come back doing a video for the film critic? No F way. Don't have time to lose. I will do a video for NT Remy and Sol Invictus instead. And uh, what I have to say about that movie, uh, I already say it, like for deep, deep core fan or those who read the comic book and stuff, there's, I think, J.J. Abrams in the production with the help of George Lucas and a lot of probably Ralph McQuarrie, the late Ralph McQuarrie designer of, of, of sketching. They, you, you, you could find a lot of things depending on your level of knowledge of the Star Wars universe as a whole. But uh, in the entire saga, this is for kids. I, uh, what I discovered at 14 years old that these movies were for kids, not for teenagers, not for adults. That we could still enjoy these kind of thing because it's kind of mystical. It's a mythology, but but it's mainstream. It's definitely mainstream now. It's definitely politically correct now. It's definitely identity politic, uh, postmodernist Marxist. There's and and the worst thing is the Force Awakens was a total remake, faking, establishing a new generation of I will say it. Lucy, not loser, they're not loser because they, but it's Lucy, Lucy, I don't know if it's the right word because even in French I'm not thinking right now but I mean, you know, it's really low quality, really low vibration uh, no essence no nothing and then <laughs> the, the last Jedi, they they destroy everything, it was like an electroshock, they lost a lot of people and actually, there were a lot of NTC. They say they were sold out for this premiere, the pre-premiere fan event. But just next to me, uh, the, probably the gal or the guy didn't show up. But I saw a lot of NTCs and people went out really fast after the movie ends. So, and the cheering were not that much, even for Billy Dee Williams, who play uh, Lando Calrissian. And, uh, and they play with us a lot. Uh, me, I was very pleased and smiling and laughing when Pal Palpatine was there. Yes, if you if you think I'm spoiling, I'm not spoiling. If you haven't seen the preview at least or something, yes, Palpatine is there. Uh, is there even from the the beginning? So it's a movie that will be in the range of three out of ten. Uh, two out of ten was for the Last Jedi. So you see, I give one point, a bit extra, for the great picture, the great um, kind of backstory that. For those who read the Dark Plagueis book or the uh, Sith or the Dark, uh, I told me what it was, you know, the comic book Dark something. So that was interesting. That For this, this is why it gained two points and an extra points for this kind of storytelling. And also the effort that J.J. Abrams made for try to please everyone with the entire SWU, which is Star Wars Universe. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, that was it. That was it. That was it. So three out of 10. Uh, am I disappointed? No, because I didn't have any expectation. Did I have a great evening with my friend? Absolutely. Did we have a very good meal after that? Absolutely. Am I sad that I didn't start this kind of live streaming at 9.50 as planned? Yes and no. I'm an agilist, so I kind I know it's planning is everything. And as I could not mitigate everything with the bad user experience of YouTube, here you have it. And then I cannot force uh, Jan to be with me because yeah, that's it. So uh, that's okay. But I still keep my thing that tonight was the night 42 years later of the end of the Skywalker saga. Uh, is it worth it to go in theater if you have about two and a half hour plus, especially in Christmas and the theater right now, they put a lot of uh, ads. I'm not talking about the trailer of the other movie. I'm talking about ads, commercial ads. So make it uh, 2.45, two hours and 45 minutes with these. Is it worth it? Maybe if, if you have nothing to do, <laughs> go there. Uh, maybe wait till... Uh, the big crowd of zombie that are still hooked to that Star Wars thing. Um, of course, it's nothing as much to rent or to be uh, anger as The Last Jedi, but in my opinion, they didn't improve it. 
and uh, it's even more for kids, even more child. Uh, and as I was saying a little bit earlier, since my 14 years old, I, I don't see it as a mature, serious movie, just uh, a great a great escape. It's a great escape. It's a great storytelling. But the storytelling was a lot better when George Lucas was writing it. Uh, you might have grief on George about directing and so on, but at least the storytelling and the way he was guiding also all the writer, because I read a lot of books from, uh, from Star Wars, which is very amazing. And this is why I give three out of 10 to the rise of Skywalker that I called on Yelp and on iMovie to the base when I made my, my vote. Uh, the rise of lame Walker. It's really lame. The, the first word after 26 minutes in the movie theater, when I was looking at the pace, the way the actor was uh, interacting and so on, my first thing was lame. This is lame. Yeah. That's the key word for me for that movie. It's lame. The Last Jedi two years ago was a tragedy. So this one is not a tragedy, not a comedy. But definitely, it won't be in my wall of fame. And maybe the wall of shame, yes. Sh not as shame as The Last Jedi, but I really didn't like it. Actually, the sequel, I don't like it. Now, give me some tomatoes for what I'm going to say. But for me, the prequel was great because I'm first and foremost an admirator of the storytelling and the soul and the art of George Lucas. I've seen all his movies, by the way, not just ours. And I really like the way he portrayed the world and he bring it, he show up to the world. And I know the prequel deep from his art was what he intended to do. Like a bit Steve Jobs, his vision of a computer was the iPad Pro. <laughs> So whether you like it or not, the creator has his right to, to put it there. And now that is more like the Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, and Lou Z, Ryan Johnson trial type of thing. <clears throat> we could definitely see that the soul of the storytelling and the soul of George Lucas is not there anymore. Uh, and me, I really like the prequel because, as I said before, this is a movie for kids for kids of the age between 7 and 11 years old. And don't take it personally. If you have a big ego and you think I'm because you like it very much more than me nowadays at, at 30, 40 something, that's okay. It's a taste. I'm not judging you. I'm just expressing my opinion, guys. So be cool. Be relaxed. Don't, don't say, oh, it's me, it's me. No, no, no. It's me. Yes, it's me now. It's on my channel. And I discuss about my taste. Is Star Wars completely uh, bad? No, it's not. It's kind. It's, it's nice. Uh, I spent like, it's 42 years old. Do you understand that? I'm 45. So I definitely, my cousin bring me to the cine park to show me Star Wars before Empire Strike Back because it's always a double lunch. So, and I was seven years old. It was my summer of getting to seven years old when I've been introduced to Star Wars and all the comic books that my one of my cousins provide me to go in deep and this what we call the expanded universe. So of course it's great for a kid, for the kid I was growing up as a teenager, I see like, okay, that's kind of a nice entertainment. And so here it is. If you have a lot of day off during the early days and you'd like to take a walk to a theater, go see it. You'll have fun. You'll enjoy yourself for sure. Especially if you have kids of seven, eight years old, bring them. They will enjoy it because it's made for their mind. Definitely, yes. So, But you're going to see on YouTube right now and maybe on Vimeo or other channel, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, a lot of people will talk, 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 and it will be grown up like me, and they will defend an opinion that, no, this is good, this is great acting, this is... No, first is just the movie. Secondly, it's it's a franchise, okay? It's a story completely hijack, all right? And for me, when you look at the nine movie, the Skywalker saga as a whole, when I say I'm one of the rare who prefer the prequel, it's because when the prequel went out in 99, I was an adult. 
and I'm a refined adult. I read books. I still read books. And not just sci-fi of Isaac Asimov or Philip K. Dick. I love real culture, deep thing. I'm diverse. I look to drama, comedy, theater, Shakespeare, Dead Poet Society, what have you. I love everything to entertain myself while I'm waiting in between my experience on this life dimension matrix. So, well, Star Wars is just part of it. And, uh, of course, there are a lot of opinion. There's a lot of talk. And we're going to see that uh, people will defend. No, 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 no. Uh, an adult could like it. But personally, it's not made for an adult. And I definitely feel. Because when I purchased my ticket for the special uh, fan pre-screen event, I was feeling like this little kiddo, this little teenager, exciting. And, and especially after being like uh, this year with all those people who passed away that, and my mom. And so, so I said, like, okay, let's make something happen. Just like, you know, the Thursday before the, these uh, two, three weeks kind of off work. Let's do it and enjoy it with, uh, with my good friend, Jan. Why not? Okay. But... Don't ask me if it was good. I will tell you, bah, it's just entertaining. But there's no soul. And if I could finish my idea, yes, because I just saw du coq Why did I like the prequel more? It's because as an adult, I was revisiting Everything, and it's a prequel, so it's everything that happened before when I was seven years old seeing Star Wars for the first time. And all these play, because I play a lot with friends or with myself, with my toys, and making scenarios. Now we have a lot of YouTubers who make a theory about things and blah, blah, blah. But us in our age and day and time, we used to play with, with the toys or the figurine or even between us. and making assumption it was theory about uh, who was the real father of and who was the father of uh, of the emperor we didn't call him palpatine we didn't know that so so for me and especially attack of the clown that was for a lot of people the lame one no i like the spirit of it and the clone war and sir everything my kid self had as a question back in 19 19- 86, 89. I remember reading a Fangoria magazine for those of my age. You will remember that Fangoria magazine. They were talking about making episode 7, 8, 9 for 1997. Finally, they made the prequel in 1999. And that was a big plan. So, well, okay. So this is why the prequel answer all my kids, my childhood questions about the Star Wars universe, or all my theory, my argument I have with my cousin who was the pusher of 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 uh, these comic books from Dark Horse back in the day, and uh, I was in love with the Mandalorian, uh, the Boba Fett. Boba Fett was my is is still my favorite uh, character of the Star Wars universe. Definitely, I like him. Quiet, uh, loner, you know, identify with that guy. Uh, so, of course, I'm not a body hunter, not yet. Uh, but that was it. So, and uh, a lot of uh, my cousins, oh, no, 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 the stormtrooper or robots or recruit. I said, no, 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 they should be something else uh, uh, made of uh, these Mandalorian because the way they, da, da, da. and finally, yeah, Attack of the Clown answered that. And I win my, my bet. I win my bid like 20 years later. And I was happy. And for those who remember the attack of the clone, I went to see it in the movie theater roughly 30 times. So much I was happy to see the rise of the empire. And tonight, oh, sorry, tonight that was exactly it. Every time we saw Palpatine or this kind of dark side type of thing, I won't spoil, as I said again, I was like enjoying it. Not because I'm dark. Of course, I'm a light artist. I, I like to promote compassion, love, light. It's even Fred Lounge, the blog, was about the story of, of my experience, my path into the light side and the love side. But 
I don't know. And the storytelling of Star Wars, the dark side is kind of the mature side that makes you think of what you should change not to fall down into the dark side. And especially now with the sequel, <laughs> what we call the uh, the light side or the Jedi, it's, it's lame. It's lame because either fantasy or real life, it's possible to impossibly win that way. And that's kind of tricky. And, and I didn't fell in the art. You know, when Luke Skywalker and the Return of the Jedi redempt his father, you believe it? Really? You believe in it? You feel it? Now, as I said, this commentary here is no spoilers. I won't say anything, but for scenes and theme and stuff and that rise of Skywalker... And I won't even be able to talk to you about who is Skywalker or who, who is Palpatine or whatever. It's it's just the title. It's completely uh, cutting the rhyme that George Lucas was making. You know, you have the Phantom Menace and a New Hope, and then the Force Awakens. Okay, that goes great. Then after you have the Empire Strike Back, Attack of the Clones, and the Last Jedi. Boop, break. Destroy the poetry. And the return of the Jedi and the rise of Skywalker. Oh, okay. So the entire galaxy of billions, billions, trillions of people revolve around a Skywalker family and the Palpatine family. At some point, it was like just funny because usually Star Wars and even uh, jo uh, George Romero back in the day also for the, his zombie movie, it was a reflection of our society. George Lucas did that. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola. All these guys of this generation of filmmaker, they used to kind of critic the society through their movies. And uh, we are the 20th right now. Yes, thank you. Exactly. It's midnight three, the 20th of December. So I'm going to end it quickly. But I'm just letting it go on my thought on this entire universe and this 42 years of story of Star Wars on the Skywalker saga. So, voila, I think I said it all. Three out of ten. And that's okay. It's just okay. It's fun. Bring your kids to see it. It's going to be enjoyable. That's it. Like Harry Potter, like, like all of those kiddo movies. That might make you laugh. But if you... If, if you if you go with expectation of having answers or having, oh, you will have answers depending on your level of fanhood, but uh, it won't be nothing binding, you know, nothing like the revelation pass like, like water on the, on the duck back. There's, I'm telling you, and, and I'm pretty good these days. I'm emotionally, I think, stable considering the fact that it's only six months since my mom passed and it's only eight months since my great uncle passed and, and my coach been shot in Chicago and, and I could have grief and being very nihilistic. No, 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 I'm kind of happy. I'm feeling very serene and, and I laughed of everything. I laughed at the fact that I lost a MacBook through wine, I don't care. I don't care. I'm I'm really detached. But I just want to express the fact that Star Wars is no more. Because even if I still have my child art, and I think this is it when I purchase that ticket, it's my kiddo inside me that relieve himself from emotional dependency. That just said. Let's do it because it's fun. It's a good evening to pass. Could go to the opera, you could go, but why not? But that's it. I won't rent it anymore. I won't go back to the movie theater to see it anymore. Uh, and if I watch it again, it's because maybe I will uh, walk in in a place where they're watching it on the couch 
on a Blu-ray on a streaming, but I won't do it myself. So that's just an okay movie. That's just the uh, entertainment, and that's just three out of ten. And there's no more soul like the pre, like the 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 original trilogy or the prequel. In my case, in my opinion, and throw me tomatoes if you'd like. I don't fucking care because for me, Attack of the Clown and Revenge of the Sith answered everything. My kid of seven years old back in 1991 in Moucherville was asking himself, and especially when I was reading the book and the comic book of Dark Horse comic about the expanded universe and the Mandalorian and uh, the Sith and the Dark Plague stories and stuff. So on and so on. Yeah, definitely. So I'll let you go to this. I don't know who was there always. I saw it jumped into two, three, four, and then so uh, I hope that if I continue to try to do live, especially on Fredo Now, just experimental, that you're going to be more interactive. And anyway, put in the comment below, what was your best Star Wars moment in the last 42 years? If you are my age, if you're younger, do the same. And uh, tell me in the comment, what was your favorite Star Wars movie with within the nine movie, just those nine movies, just the Skywalker saga. What was your favorite Star Wars movie? And also, what was your Star Wars moment? And what was your uh, favorite character or top three of favorite character? Please let me know below. I'd like to know who is my audience, who is coming to Fredo Lounge, and for what. So, Put in the comment also any type of request of subject you would like me to experiment with you or exchange with you. So on that, after 43 minutes and 31, I love you in La Keche. That was Fredo Lounge and I'm signing off. Have a jolly holidays and goodbye.